Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webcast, Levering Change Control for Security. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Events Specialist at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be a part of today's webcast. Our presenters are Jeff Hancock, Principal at Advanced Secure Cybersecurity Group, and Jeff Lawson, Senior Director, Product Management at Tripwire. That's right, we have two Jeffs for you today. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, you want to make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speakers. Be sure to check your speaker volume, the volume setting on your computer, and your headset to ensure that it's turned on and volume is at an audible level. Today's presentations will be using a slide deck. You can click on the expand rectangle on the top right corner of the slide area to enlarge. If you're not seeing the slide movement in your console, you can try refreshing your browser. If you're exper experiencing any technical difficulties, please click on the Help widget, which is the question mark icon on your console. And it typically covers all the technical issues. If you have a question during the presentation, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. Time permitting, we'll have a Q&A session uh, during the last part of the presentation. And feel free to submit any co comments you have uh, via this widget as well. Lastly, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with the link to the on-demand version of the webcast and the slide deck. So now let's get on with the presentation. A bit about our speakers. Jeff Hancock is the principal at Advanced Cybersecurity Group. He has been in cybersecurity for 26 years with an extensive background in cyber operations, business, and policy advisor. His expertise is in cyber operations, building 17 security operations centers, and managing a dozen others for government and corporate organizations. Jeff Lawson is Senior Director, Product Management at Tripwire. He has spent over 20 years in the software industry in a multitude of business and technical responsibilities. With roles in IT support, development, architecture, and product management, he has the technical and business acumen to continue to drive great products and innovation. For more information on both speakers, click on the bio widget at the bottom of your console. So now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Hancock. Take it away, Jeff. Thanks, Kate. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, afternoon for me, I'm on the East Coast. I think I see some people on the, uh, the attendee list who are also on the East Coast, or at least it might appear so. So I think uh, halfway into our day out here. So this afternoon, uh, we'll be talking about really IT change control uh, and the importance of change control as it relates not only to basic IT operations, but then also uh, cybersecurity and that impact and really the, um, the dovetailing and the cooperation, uh, cooperative relationship that IT operations should have with cybersecurity teams or security teams in general uh, to make sure that the security posture of the organizations are strong as possible. So throughout this, as Kate said, throughout this presentation, uh, we've got 26 slides. We may or may not get through all of them. Um, you'll all get a copy of the slides, so um, feel free to refer to that uh, in the future. Uh, throughout this conversation, we really, Jeff and I would really like to make this a conversation. So feel free to shoot some questions off, uh, and let's, we want to make this really interactive and practical. So uh, I'm assuming everybody sees the first slide there. Uh, I think it clicks through, so it should be good. Um, Interesting point to note here about China. Uh, it's interesting when your adversary, such as China or other general adversaries, are actually having trouble keeping up with uh, being able to conduct their attacks because there are so many opportunities and so many vulnerabilities within IT systems. Uh, as you guys know, uh, the IT systems, when you buy them out of the box, the configurations are standard. Uh, they're not uh, not prefig prefigured to uh, security postures that, that are conducive to security operations. Uh, and that is one key thing that has consistently come up in assessments that we do, conversations that we have. Um, part of the interface that I have out here on the East Coast, I live in the D.C. area, is really with government and industry. So our customers and clients are a mix of that. And I tell you, this, that is one of the most um, highest risk areas within any organization is that lack of cooperation coordination between IT operations, configuration management, and security, uh, and how that works. So when we got this little article, and I thought that was uh, pretty telling uh, that uh, 
you know, there's so many opportunities and so many vulnerabilities that our enemies are having a hard time recruiting the right people to assist in, in getting our stuff. Interesting place to be. So on some on more unfortunate facts, right? So the, the vast majority of compromises um, based on known problems. So some of you may be familiar with uh, the Center for Internet Security. <clears throat> they have an org uh, a, a project in that organization uh, called the CIS Benchmarks. And what they've done is they actually, CIS uh, supports the MS multi-state ISAC uh, for security operations. Interesting side note, as they've done that for 15 years, they have uh, been able to develop a database of a variety of IT, traditional IT technical systems, and they've been able to polish uh, and, and tune, fine-tune those systems and then publish that information. So you can go actually onto their, their website and get data on how to fine-tune your IT stack so that you make the configuration management much easier. Uh, and that, again, as, I, as you see on the slide here, the vast majority of the compromises are based on known problems, such as IT configurations, uh, which is a, a big struggle for people. Um, the second bullet there I think is particularly key. Uh, the U.S. CERT came out, um, we worked with them last summer, and we discussed with them to, how to identify the most obvious, most egregious security risks with any corporation. Uh, and it came down to so five specific defenses, and the top one is making sure your hardware and software are configured properly. So again, we can't overemphasize the uh, importance of being able to tie IT security uh, configurations and getting that, getting those systems correctly put together, the right documentation, uh, in some cases the right tools, but really the right methodology, the right process to be able to do that. So IT security and change management, as I say here, right, on our, the last couple of months, you've, uh, there's been a variety of uh, breaches, breach reports that come out that overemphasize really that issue, right? Uh, as uh, the last bullet there is, I think, particularly interesting. Uh, some of you on the call here, as I see, look at different uh, commercial and organization, uh, state government organizations. Um, interesting situation that uh, was had a few months back regarding election systems, electoral systems, uh, and how they were breached. And they were breached because of that lack of clear configuration. There were gaps in the configuration of their IT system, uh, and the bad guys were able to slip through. So again, there there is so many opportunities. Uh, for protection and so many opportunities to blow it. So the important thing, the important thing is to really be able to have a secure methodology and process that really helps drive great communication and teamwork and then identifying the right tools. Any comments there, Jeff? No, that's accurate. I mean, we, when we look at okay. uh, a lot of the attack vectors and things that are happening out there, we see you know, commodity attacks are still the number one attack. Those are all known tools, known vulnerabilities, things that script kitties. Most of those in almost every case that we see out there could have been stopped just by simple configuration, securing your configuration and managing that properly through both IT and information security. Yep, very much so, very much so. And this is a a good graphic to just explain some of the basic network functions that I'm sure folks on the call here can relate to, right? There are so many tools, so many platforms, so many applications, so many devices uh, that IT has to manage today that it can get overwhelming pretty fast. And it, it can get to be too much work to, for one people, one person or a team of people to do. Uh, a friend of mine calls that the fog of more, right? There's so many different aspects to managing your IT, so many different manage, aspects to managing your security that it just becomes too much. When it becomes too much, the default is, I just need to get through the day. I just need to make sure the server is up and running and we've got applications on here that make the customer happy, <clears throat> right? And security and correct configurations take a back seat, which is, again, that, that's always a risky place to be. So. so definition of configuration management, and I certainly want to put this out to the group uh, for any, um, any other definitions. I mean, it's not a set term, but this is one that we've used for years, right? The ability to create, edit, and manage IT security hardening policies that fits business processes and they build a balanced risk and productivity. Right? If that, I have yet to see at an executive level a solid understanding, a non, uh, excuse me, I should say a non-technical, strong business 
level uh, of understanding of those terms. Uh, and that, that is just because uh, the nature of the business, the nature of technology today, and it behooves folks like us to be able to understand that and fall back to that uh, explanation understanding when we're dealing with but really the folks who pay the bills <clears throat> in the companies that we're a part of, right? And we've got a, a, a double-edged sword here. Not only do we have to manage the IT shops and the security configuration, but we also have to be able to communicate to executives in business terms, non-technical terms, why what we're doing is important uh, and the value proposition. And again, you know, it's, it's one thing to say we've got these great tools <clears throat> and all that's wonderful, uh, but a tool doesn't uh, doesn't fit the bill, right? It's not. It, it's always how that tool is used. It's those process again, the procedures around that to make that work. So your gaps in your organization, they certainly can be correlated, as we've got here, to a number of uh, a variety of factors. Um, one of the most compelling factors is the last bullet there about security not being built in but bolted on after the event. Uh, the event could be after a breach, it could be after a purchase of hardware, software, whatever the case may be. Um, again, you know, being in a difficult spot as we are uh, as IT professionals, being able to understand um, and have that strike that balance of cybersecurity and configuration management. Quiet group today. Feel free to ask questions or jump in, guys. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So, legacy thinking, right? I've got an X on that on the bottom there. Uh, being able to identify <clears throat> uh, legacy, you know, the, the default thinking within an IT organization about just being able to get stuff up and running and working, uh, helping organizations figure out what they need to get done um, is a dangerous, again, a dangerous place. So there's definitely the the issue of being able to use the right processes to uh, enable really more proactive, productive development uh, of, of what's going on. Uh, I'd like to give an example real quick. Um, I was working with a rather large uh, oil and gas company uh, in, uh, in Texas about seven months ago. Um, working with them, giving them uh, an IT and security assessment. As we went through that process, we identified a handful of gaps. One of them was um, the lack of IT configuration. Um, now, this is a big company, uh, and so they definitely have the, the brain power. They definitely have the revenue to purchase what they need, um, but they hadn't for, for whatever reason, right? That, that legacy thinking had been creeping in uh, and had been in helping them really keep very focused on today's issues and not really thinking about the, the broader picture. So came in and did an assessment for them, gave them a bunch of solutions uh, and ideas to be more secure to the uh, CISO and the CIO. Uh, and a few weeks later, they had discovered that uh, they had received an email, actually, uh, and discovered that uh, someone had, a bad actor, as it turns out, had installed uh, some ransomware on uh, two of their servers, so a total of four hard drives and locked it down. <clears throat> and uh, essentially, long story short, they were uh, charging, they wanted to charge this corporation $15 million for four hard drives. Uh, quite a bit of money for four hard drives. Uh, but at that point, the damage had been done. The adversary already knew what was on that, on those hard drives and the value proposition uh, that they had. Uh, and again, long story short, the company did pay it, uh, and they never got the data back. Um, and their backups were seven months old or eight months old. So uh, they, they, because of a poor configuration process, as the investigation went on after that, that happened, a poor configuration management process, uh, they quickly identified you know, they had more than one gap in their network that made it very easy for anybody to be able to slip in uh, and, and conduct this type of hacking that they did and install the ransomware. So it, it really drove home the point to the board and the CEO, the value proposition of uh, getting out of that legacy thinking, developing, uh, <clears throat> as we have here, developing good or excellent succession planning, right? In your business process, how are you going to able to take your team, your non-technical business folks that you support, and take them through a succession planning process? They may have a software platform that's been around for seven, eight years, and it's 
barely working or it's barely updated and barely patched and still uh, is high risk in the organization. So it's, it's our job, your job, to be able to come back to them and say, you know, this the security posture of our organization is increasingly high because of this one issue, right? And being able to, to put a finger on that is key. Um, I also emphasize here at this point that um, a lot of people that we work with only consider that the IT configuration management process and planning is an IT-only club of people. We get together and sit down and, and define what this is and, and the, the planning around it. Um, and they leave out business. So I'd like to submit to, for opinion here and thought uh, for, to everybody on the phone, uh, right, the, the idea of encapsulating, incorporating the business teams before, during, and after any IT change configuration management. Uh, one organization I worked with uh, before, we would meet with the business folks, business teams, <clears throat> every month to give them an update on their current, their current particular IT systems that they were dependent on upon to do their business. So we'd give them updates on what's going on, issues in non-technical terms. So sometimes it was a five-minute meeting, sometimes it was an hour and a half meeting. Uh, but it, it, it drove home the point not only to our team but to the business leaders that they have a vested interest in understanding how their IT systems are supporting them. So this, this conversation of IT configuration management is key to the success of any business, uh, more so, I think, than people realize. Again, business owners get running and gunning, and they, they forget about the fact that IT configuration is, is key. Uh, and then IT system managers, CIOs, CISO, security teams uh, are just running fast, right? They just want to install it, upload the applications, and move on. Uh, but having that regular conversation once a month gets out of that legacy thinking, helps you start putting management in the loop, help putting non-technical partners in the loop, people who your customers actually depend on this stuff, getting them involved in what's going on so that they can become more engaged in the process. Uh, and they understand, oh, we need to set aside money for updates, or we need to do this with technology. Or in one instance, uh, there was a, a sales team who wanted to put a lot more customer data out on through accessing uh, through the Internet website and their phones to the customers. Um, and the IT security team came back and said, sure, we could do that, but your risk goes up significantly from a security standpoint, uh, which no one really had thought of, for obviously, from a business side. They just thought, oh, this is great. We have more, we'll have get more customers this way. But it was that proactive thinking, that non-legacy thinking, that said, wait a second, we have to, to not just foot the bill and, and fix this problem or provide a solution. We've got to think about forward thinking this through and, and what the impact is long term to the data and the risk, the corporate risk of the organization. So it's certainly something that uh, that has to be considered when you're playing at this level within a, a an IT organization, within a company, uh, within an agency, uh, within a bank, within a whatever. Or you've got to be able to have that understanding of as IT configuration management goes, it is a function in the larger risk management process of the corporation. Um, therefore, it's got to, you've got to have strategic thinking about it and have those processes in place. Any comments there, Jeff? Yeah, I think um, you made one point that I'd like to really get out and, and folks thought here from this group, and that was when you were talking about IT systems and configurations and this whole example around ransomware. When you look... Um, Take a look at the traditional CIA triad model for information security. That's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. That's, that used to be a principle, a big three-pillar principle for information security, and only information security. From an IT perspective, an operations perspective, we were all about enabling agile business and move fast and make sure our services are there. When you look at the impact of threat-like ransomware, it truly is about both availability and confidentiality. It has an impact on both mm -hmm. IT operations and security operations. That is why tying it back to the business is so important. You just look at it, I mean, basically, your services, your systems, everything was still running, but the confidentiality of that data, because it was hacked and because it was basically encrypted and wasn't available to business services, meant the availability, the most important thing to IT operations, no longer good. So being able to blend those two things and watching them come together, you know, it. it it makes so much more sense from the business perspective because we really are looking for the same things. We want these systems to work, we want the data to be confidential, and we want the data to have integrity, to not be manipulated. 
So, you know, making sure that we understand that those are three pillars for information security. If you flip those, those are really the same exact three pillars for IT operations as well. So as we look at that from a thought mm -hmm. perspective, you know, think about how important it would have been for those two teams to work together. Look at those things. Yep, agreed, agreed. And I think uh, uh, another uh, <clears throat> another example I want to be able to share here is uh, I, some of you on the phone here may have heard of the Office of Personnel Management, the OPM breach that happened about a year ago. Um, uh, living out here in, in the D.C. region, you know, you end up getting a front seat to some of the stuff. And in the line of work I'm in, you really get a front seat to some of the stuff. Um, and when you think about how bad actors look at your organization, your organization in particular, what do they find most valuable to your organization? And how is that information secured? Uh, and, and that goes also, I mean, IT configuration management goes right to me, goes right to the heart of that. How is the information secured? Right? Pro proper IT configurations, proper change management. If that is not there, your configurations, you can have a great lockdown server, uh, but as you do change management, if that isn't a solid, complete process, it's a huge gap. It only takes one time, one bad guy, one way to get in here, uh, and all it has to do is sit back in a dark corner and wait for some configuration change. Um, the OPM breach was an example of that. There was credentials that were stolen, and the bad actor sat in a dark corner of the server and watched data go by until they were able to access more servers that had not been changed in over seven years, uh, excuse me, in six years in several cases. Uh, have not been updated, and they were just running a whole and running and running and running and still holding old data. Um, and it's, you know that's a none of you on this call uh, you know has data that's at national security level. I don't think. Um, obviously, I, I don't see the whole list of people. I may be wrong there. Um, the point is, there's a lot of information in your corporations that bad bad guys want. Uh, so being able to look back at and consider how IT configuration management impacts that security and impacts the operations of the organization is, is key, right? It's not something, IT, everybody gets used to IT configuration management because it's been around for 20, 30 years, right? A process and a method to do that or tools to do that with. Um, so it becomes an afterthought, uh, which is dangerous because once you start thinking of it that way, as Jeff just pointed out, that triad, the CIA triad, um, does fully apply not only to IT, but also applies obviously to business as well. Um, so that's a key part of, of making sure that your organization is secure. So, good point, Jeff. So, the change control configuration considerations. So obviously, the, you, can, you can go online, you can get so many different ideas of uh, change control processes, everything from Biddle to a handful of others, right? I mean, there's, you guys know what these are. Um, a ton. And when you have product uh, vendors, uh, they may be having their own version of what that looks like. The key thing is, no matter your process, you've got to be able to make sure that some common things are covered here. Not only desktops and servers and networks, et cetera, et cetera, but everything from cloud services to mobile phones to uh, a variety of other things, you know, a variety of other applications and, and, and platforms, whether they're third-party held like a cloud service provider, or uh, it is a third-party application that's, that you host in your organization. Right? Those are all high-risk areas. And again, as a bad guy, all I've got to do is do that reconnaissance on your organization and sit back and try to watch those things. So being able to have um, a solid change control process that's documented, which is, I know, it's one of the most challenging, most enjoyable things to do is document a change control process. And everybody just gets all excited when you talk about that. Uh, it's you know one of the most boring things to do, but it's very critical because that historical information it provides is key uh, to be able to fall back on to make sure everything in your system is, is updated and working correctly. Um, as well as being able to, and this is this is a pro and con here, right? <clears throat> being able to have uh, automated capabilities. Right? The automated capabilities sound great, but they're only as accurate as the person behind the screen putting it in and automating it, and monitoring it, and updating it. So there's keys that, that you know, that's a struggle, right? There, there are only a few um, applications I'm aware of firsthand that help you manage through that really well. 
so that it actually helps you double check your automated capabilities and what's going on. Um, they're very handy that way, but again, that's not normal. It's not a normal uh, application or a normal service that application providers have. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. Uh, and then also certainly leveraging uh, the whitelisting um, to make sure the applications are compliant and secure, right? That's, that's, that's another long, lengthy process. But when stuff hits the fan, right, it's really important to be able to, to know and to look back on, I have a historical record of my configuration management. I know what's whitelisted and what's not. And you're able to track down from an IT manager's perspective, you're able to the CIO's perspective, you're able to track down information when a breach happens. And, and since we're talking, I'm mentioning breach here real quick, um, the dependency uh, on an instant response team that an instant response team has on IT configuration and change control is pretty critical uh, because it's one thing to be able to get a direct attack. Uh, a piece of malware, but, you know, phishing, et cetera, et cetera. It's another thing when um, that malware is actually sneaks into the network basically through, you know, a, a poor configuration somewhere on a piece of software or hardware. Um, that's one of the, the easiest ways to get into an organization. So making sure that you have some sort of representation on an incident response team or an incident response plan and how the IT configuration helps provide the historical data of what the system should look like, but then also provides proactive information whenever each happens that the team knows what to fall back to and what to change and what to update and what to modify quickly. Um, that's, a, that's something that gets overlooked that I've seen on the uh, response plans for teams. Uh, it's an afterthought, but uh, it is a critical piece because every time people go back to that, wait a minute, well, how's our system set up? Right. So it's a critically important that uh, the IT configuration is a key part of that incident management plan. So other considerations, right? Obviously, continuous monitoring while change control, um, that's critical, right? It, you change, uh, several organizations I work with where change control requests were coming in on a daily basis, upwards of 100, uh, which was ridiculous. Um, too much, way too much to manage, way too much to, to control, uh, and it was it became, so chaotic that the organization, uh, you know, the IT, the CIO was throw his hands up in the air because there was nothing at the time that they could do to figure out how to control all that uh, and try to get a process flow down, again, which like, it, it is key, right? It's one thing to actually mechanically do the IT configuration. It's another thing to help administrate that. Uh, and the, they have to have both of those together in order to be successful. Uh, and again, there's just there's not many tools out there that can really facilitate that uh, easily and effectively that I have found. Uh, so no questions from anybody so far. So surprise. Uh, please feel free because, uh, you know, hearing the sound of my own voice gets old after a while. Um, and also a key point here, too, is uh, centralized management security uh, of compliance and change control process, right? So it's one thing to, from an IT security perspective, there's two aspects of security today. There's the compliance, which is really what we call check the box, um, or there's operation security, which is actually changing it on the wire, getting the job done on a daily basis, patching, updating, active cybersecurity. IT change control um, is definitely reliant upon, there, there's an aspect of the compliance standpoint, which you've got to have your servers in this configuration, yes, yes or no, check. And then you have, you have to have the ability to go out there and check. And that's the active, the operational security or operational IT configuration component. You've got to have that capability to go out there and check and automate and, and make that happen as quickly as you possibly can. So those are some key things that you've got to be able to think about and have a process for. So next slide. Elements of successful change management. So just a couple slides here on this. Uh, you know, for the sake of time, we didn't want to go too deep into all this stuff. I think there's enough here to to help um, encourage, hopefully, or help think about. So the elements are really the the planning of what you want to do, right? The the data flow diagrams, uh, no, the architecture of your organization, all the IT infrastructure, but then overlaying all the business and how the business actually uses that architecture. Again, that's key. And you look in your business, if you do those things I just said, you can look across your corporation, you, you can see 
you know, these 10 servers, nothing changes. They're pretty static. They're pretty stable uh, as far as the, how the business uses them on a regular basis. They're updated. They're touched. They're data going in and out. No big spikes. Nothing, you know, tremendously uh, risky. But then you may have 15 other servers that are sitting a little bit further out uh, in your network uh, that are, are touched by your sales team, touched by your engineering team, touched by customers, uh, touched by partners. That your IT configuration management and risk assessment, or risk evaluation should go up tremendously when you have uh, a network um, that is, is set up that way. I like to think of it like a, you throw a rock in a, in a pond, in a still pond, and you get those concentric rings. Well, that innermost ring is the most secure servers on your network. IT configuration is solid, systems are solid, there's not much activity on those systems. There's not much access to those systems. That's pretty safe. No one's really going to, you know, the risk, risk value there is lower. But as you get further away, further out from that in your network, in your architecture, risk goes up because you've got more people touching it, more people using it, more people playing with it. So planning is key and understanding that mapping of what that looks like. Uh, also identifying the, the current and future state configurations. What is your business, how is your business using IT today? And what is the configuration of the network? What is the business model that, that uses that information today? And then what's the business plan in the future? Is your company or organization launching a new product? Is it expanding a current product? Is it shutting down a current product? How does that affect your IT operation? Being able to have that information before it happens is, is key. Because again, you, you get away from the, the legacy lab type thinking, whereas I'm just going to get it and plug it in and off we go. Uh, you get into the more proactive. We're actually partnering with your business owner uh, regarding how they can best use technology to get their needs met. So those are two very key things. Additionally, um, the governance, the governance, and the uh, the business impact value of those configurations. Right, uh, being able to be, uh, you know, to meet the compliance requirements of different organizations. Uh, and different regulations is key, right? Again, that's a compliance checklist type perspective from an IT configuration to a security perspective. Uh, but then the other side of that coin is the operational piece. How do you want to operationalize it? How do you take care of that? How do you make that uh, easy for your team and your organization? And that's, a, that's a key thing. Being able to have that as a, one of your elements uh, to successful change management is critical. Uh, and then as I talked about just a minute ago, uh, the business impact and value of current fig configurations, right? Without business, obviously, the most would have a job. So being able to make sure to the CIO, <coughs> the CISO, or your business partners um, the real value and translate that value in how you apply and how you provide capability from a business standpoint is key uh, with all of your customers uh, and even your partners and your supply chain as well, and understanding what those risks are and aren't. Um, again, a, as an example, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the target breach that happened a few years back, uh, and that was perpetrated through uh, their supply chain. Uh, an HVAC vendor out of Pennsylvania uh, had access to a billing server. They would log in and uh, update their billing uh, sending off invoices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to a regional billing center server in the northeastern, northwestern Pennsylvania. Um, and that, that was a risk, right? The IT configurations of your third party uh, system is a risk. So how do you try to protect that? Well, you know, you can raise a lot of red flags. You can make known to the, the third party provider that their IT configurations need to be updated, correct, they need to be in alignment with um, your organization and how you run business, uh, that's very key, right? Being able to sit down with your business leads, being able to sit down with your supply chain, identify who they are, uh, identify what data they touch in your network, how they touch it, how they play with it, and identifying those configurations and making sure that's secure and that, that it's updated on a regular basis or it's, it's managed regularly. Um, you know, in some cases, there might not be anything you can do to keep that secure. Everything has to be as you know, insecure from an IT config perspective as possible, but you can work with your security team to, you know, put a, a, a moat around that server, or a moat around those systems to help try to increase that security to whatever degree possible. But it's important to keep that in mind, right? As owners of the IT systems in the organization, you have a vested interest in the security of the company, 
uh, and many other people are definitely uh, uh, dependent on uh, on your being on you doing that doing that kind of job. Let's see, I think I got a question yeah, here. Have a question out there? Yeah. Yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, so how is version control integrated into configuration management in the DevOps environment? Um, good question. How is the variable surface area leveraged to determine risk operations? Yeah, well, really good questions, right? That's a that is very much like um, uh, you know changing tires in a moving car, quite frankly. Um, version control, and depending on how fast your DevOps environment is working, right? It, I have you know. I can only take some personal experience here. So I've seen DevOps environments where, on one hand, they're updating things every 24 hours or less, and I've seen some ops environments where it's every 18 months. Um, so being able to align having from a, a development operation, a development environment, being able to identify date points uh, where you're able to say, okay, version control is coming up because at this date and time, all the products, all the, all the code has to look like this, sound like this, smell like this at this point. If it's not, here's what it needs to look like, uh, here's what you need to do, being able to insert that version control into the configuration management of the system. There's definitely the, when you're a, an in-house development shop, uh, the coordination between your development team, your customer, and your IT configuration and security teams, I mean, it, it is definitely, again, it's changing tires on a moving car. You've got four different groups. You've got to be able to um, uh, coordinate with to be able to uh, make sure that any changes on the network, again, are documented. You identify what systems they're going to ch make changes on. You identify the impact of those changes. You can have a, uh, somebody developing a platform, updating a platform on a server that actually impacts a third-party provider. Well, you don't want to update that without letting them know. And when you do, you want to make sure that it doesn't change their configurations and doesn't change any of your, of your configurations anywhere else. So you're going to have to be able to have that, again, back to those elements of successful change management. That governance piece, that control piece is, is key. Um, Jeff, you want to add anything into that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in my experience, a lot of times we talk about DevOps environments and constantly move, look at what configuration management really is. It's about finding a state of something and being able to set your configurations to that state, right, and match it, and then making sure as it changes, either good or bad, you're watching and controlling. So even with version control ops and applications and stuff like that in environments that are constantly changing, being able to know what state they're supposed to be in and then be able to run the checks and understand when they're not. Version control perspective, I mean, the tools you have out there for automation of all of these DevOps environments and stuff. Well, most of them are based on configurations and recipes and things like that anyways. Those things should be version controlled. But in some cases, those things should also be part, the version should be part of the baseline of a, of a secured configuration. Mm -hmm. So even managing and tracking those, not just a setting on an operating system, but a configuration, a level of an application is also. Yep, agreed, agreed. Um, and I'm not sure if I entirely get the, uh, Variable surface area leverage to determine risk to operations. Surface area being the application surface area. I'm assuming um, that's a key. You know, obviously that's that's usability. Does that application uh, does it have uh, uh, is it touched by a variety of people? Is it modified? Is it implemented? Is it uh, changed? And then what's the risk of the operational piece? Right again, that goes back to that governance control piece, which is key to be able to do that. Um, the um, what else here? I think the last question there, Jeff, was just the Tripwire Enterprise and Tripwire stuff, which I'll cover here in a, in a slide. Yep, absolutely. Yep, and we can. Yeah, we're like almost there right now. So, um, other elements of successful change management, right? Implementation, operations, and evaluate business risk. Right. Those are key components that we've just been going over. Identification of the need of changes, uh, monitoring and updating, and that in business impact is always, you know, we, we like to encourage IT operations folks and configuration management teams to go to the customer first, just to get a better lay of the land as far as how the devices, tools, products, platforms are being utilized. So then, again, any of those modifications that get made 
uh, are made with all of that in mind, just to, to make sure that all the bases are covered. Again, uh, almost last slide here. So evaluate that business risk, ensuring all affected parties are aware of the change, determine the implementation of change, and ensure correct business requirements and objectives are met. Right. So again, as I said, <coughs> partway through this, the the goal of IT configuration. <clears throat> change management is not just the mechanics of actually changing the stuff on the server. Uh, it is having a process to do that with a bigger picture in mind, with a strategy in mind. Changing the server's configurations is very tactical, right? It's very ones and zeros. I'm doing it right now. It's a hands-on mechanical thing. Um, what we're talking about here, though, is taking that and expanding that concept and looking at it more strategically. How do you manage that overall and considering the security teams you have the, as pointed out in the question, DevOps teams, um, and, and as well, especially as your business teams, and how can you do that in a way that's most effective? Um, you know, I think that's that's a, again that is a critical point of any IT operations piece. So, I want to make sure we hammer that a few more times. Um, and again, it's no matter the tools you use, those are great. But again, you know, people are different, so. It's not necessarily the tools you use, it's the process that you manage when you get those things done. Um, how you do that, what tools you have to do that with are critically important. So, over to you, Jeff. Right. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, great information in there. I love uh, as you talk about the process and the tools, because as you know, I'm probably going to talk a little bit more about the actual tools. So the point being that, you know, it is really hard to define change control process, secure configuration management. Um, but it's even harder to actually implement them once you've got them. And one of the things we'll talk about, that I'll talk about here today with you, is Tripwire and Price can help you in the implementation. Third piece of this, which many people miss, and, and they don't even realize, if you get to a point where you're sec secured, it is the enforcement of that process that is even more difficult than the definition and the implementation. Once I've got it, once I've set to a state, I've got the process down, how do I actually enforce that the things that are out there that are happening are supposed to be happening, right? The monitoring, the detection, all those things that come. As we move forward here, on my first slide, I talk about change. I talk about change as the great disruptor. The reason I call it the great disruptor is it is both a necessity and a harbinger of disaster. Right, so you you absolutely have to have change in order to become efficient within your organization to drive the levels of service and and become more operationally effective. Right, to deliver business agile mode to all these different types of things. You also need change in your security operations in order to be more secure, to be stronger, to reduce risk, and do all those other things. But at the same time, change change that you don't know about, change that is unplanned, change that shouldn't be happening is the biggest risk to your process, to your implementation, to your... So even though it's the boon, it's also be the biggest risk. When you look at Tripwire Enterprise, and I'll talk a lot about Tripwire Enterprise now as it, as it pulls into configuration management and IT operations, um, it's real about managing what you don't know, right? So if you've got a great process that you've defined and you've, and you've actually implemented this process and got configurations, you're happy about where you stand from a business and a security perspective, it's about managing the things that you don't know, right? So with Tripwire Enterprise, there are a lot of different things that we can actually detect to help you know. Look uh, across the board here in these pictures, you know, looking at credentials, access management, uh, the introduction of a new user or group, any of the objects that you may see in a directory service, any type of escalation of privileges, those are the kinds of things that Triple Enterprise help you detect, which are a huge risk to your business. We talked about uh, some of the different breaches that have happened. In particular, uh, you know, Jeff mentioned one where it was user credentials that were sitting out there for way too long that weren't managed properly or understood. You've also got changes here to documents, file systems, configurations, uh, things like that that the, an agent-based solution or an agentless solution like Triple Enterprise can deliver when something changes, the configuration of an application, for example, an executable on disk, things like that, things that should or should not be happening. Now you've got changes to the registry, which are your keys around you know, devices that are installed, drivers that are installed, applications that are services that are running. 
got call applications. So not only you know talk about configuration management. Configuration management isn't just the configuration of the operating system. It's also the configuration of your applications, services that you have that are providing your business value. Right? So being able to monitor an application for state changes, being able to see when it's upgraded, when a file changes within the application, when its services go offline, things like that, so being able to manage and monitor those things. Uh, databases as well. We talked a little bit about the ransomware. Guess what? You should be monitoring at the same exact time your database configurations. This is your schema. This is your access control. Right. This is any metadata about an actual database. For a Tripwire Enterprise, we're not looking at the data, the content of the data itself, and saying, hey, in this particular column, is this data changing? No, but we can look at you and tell you, hey, for this particular column, why did it go from a bar card to a binary? Why did this metadata change? Those are the types of things that major impact both risk-wise, business, and solutions. Then the network, right? We talk about your network as a big exposed point. You've got routers, firewalls, devices for IPS out there. You've got ports and services that are running on your hosts as well, right? Where you're listening and doing different things. Be able to monitor those. Watch its configuration. Watch for changes. Watch for holes that may happen. And these holes may happen where, hey, the business needs X. This needed to happen. But what implication did that actually have to the security and the risk side of it? That's where that communication becomes super important. And that's why having a solution like Trip4 Enterprise give you the visibility into those things makes sense. So now, as we're doing implementation, talk about reconciling, right? So one of the things is if I'm telling you about every change that you're interested in, whether it's planned or unplanned, doesn't matter what it was, how do I deal with that data? This is the enforcement part, right? This is very, very difficult to talk about. In large organizations, thousands upon thousands of changes occurring each day that have to be managed. So there are ways with Tripwire Enterprise that we can help make those processes more efficient. One of them is what we call business as usual, right? This is most definitely a service account, a patch Tuesday, things that are usual business. App, my applications get updated on day X or Y or month, whatever. These are things that should be happening. They should be happening within a business as usual. Um, you've also got what we call change windows, right? So these are windows of time when change should be pushed or applied to these systems and configurations. This is change that should be planned. Now, again, if you're not looking at the granular level of change itself, but you're just looking at a change to an application, for example, change windows work great. They help eliminate some of that noise. They know whether this was a planned change to the application, and they understand the impact it has on security and business. But on the forthcoming side, when you wanted to get into a lot more detail about or granularity about the change, because that's where your real value comes in. Play. Like, hey, I made a change to an application, but no, really what I did was I changed these three configuration files for this application. I want to know, basically, were those the changes that were planned? Were those the exact values of things that should have happened? Right? And if they weren't, why not? Who made them? What happened? All the great things that go into what Trip Brian Price can help you do. That comes in the form of what we would call integrations, right? So we are not a change control or, um, process or engine like a help desk engine like now or Remedy or something like that, right? What we do is we allow you to integrate very nicely with these systems of truth, right? These sources of truth. Basically, Trip Enterprise can do a few different things. One, it can validate that the change that was supposed to be made was actually the change that was made and was made by the right person in the right time period and then automatically promote those to the new configured baseline, right, or where this thing should be. And it then tracks the history of which makes it very, very powerful. On the flip side of that, let's say Tripwire Enterprise detected a change that wasn't part of your change control process. It was an unplanned change. It was something that could be an indicator of either compromise or maybe it was not malicious. It was uh, an IT help desk person making a config change to an application but they typed in wrong. It wasn't the expected value of what you were supposed to get, or they changed the wrong file. So another way that Triple Enterprise can help you there and help basically alleviate some of that is to then integrate with those tickets and actually create tickets for people to look at, alerts and things like that. Being able to say, hey, this change happened. Was it supposed to happen? Uh, was it within your change window? But from a granular level, it wasn't the change that was really supposed 
really about driving efficiency, validating and reconciling those changes with the source. We've got the ultimate tool of Tripwire Enterprise in detection, the ultimate way for it to talk to these systems. Are the last piece of this is response. Right? So I basically, I've got this great process. I've put the implementation together. I've got enforcement of it. We all know things happen. And whether they're malicious or whether they're an expected change and it just didn't have the expected outcome, what Tripwire Enterprise can help you do is be that hero. Know when something changes, number one. Right? Know if it was part of my plan or not, number two. Then know the exact details of what was changed, which gives you the ability to do quick incident response searching and then get it set back to a, a, a stage or a, a, a state that is very important to get you back up and running, right? That drives efficiency. That drives your availability, right? Your, your triad here for both operations and security. It drives trust. So if I can ensure that I'm getting everything and picking everything up with a single solution tool set from both a, a security perspective and an operations perspective, that drives trust between the two groups, which you absolutely have to have. So being that hero, being able to, to actually prove value in that system and show that my process is working, I've implemented it right, and I have the ability to enforce it and then respond when it's time is super key. And that's where Trip for Enterprise is an absolute help or a solution making that process better and stronger. Without the process, it is just a tool. With that process in place, it is a fantastic solution, lowering both cost of doing business as well as number of people that it takes to do it. Automation, 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 very much a key. So my last slide, and I'll pop some questions up here. Um, Yes, the slide deck will be made available, absolutely. So we will be giving out. <laughs> um, any questions in particular on uh, change and what we've seen or leveraged here, Tripwire Enterprise and some of the information that Jeff had shown? Give a second. Um, Jeff, any comments on that as we kind of walk through? I wanted to make sure that we gave a few minutes for questions, or um, then I wanted to add my funny cartoon here at the end. Because yeah. as funny as it is, it is absolutely true. And I have seen this in every information security organization as well as every operational organization out there. It's the change that occurs, we didn't expect it. It is sometimes bad. Yep, fully agree, right? So it's, it's the ability to um, look at your IT configuration management, your current processes as core to the organization, and then identifying what two or three or five things that are unique to your organization that you must have. Again, mapping out of the network, which is the historical data, uh, tracking and managing the configurations, uh, being able to have as much automated as, as possible because, you know, 10 people can't take care of a thousand servers easily uh, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so being able to automate what you can is, is, is critically important and documenting that, but then also coming to the table uh, with the business folks and being able to help them understand the impact of their decisions. I think those are those are some key things uh, that I've seen, that we've all seen, um, really help an organization uh, be, become more secure, but then also help the role of the IT change manager go a lot more smooth. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I didn't bring up that is very interesting, this is more, more about change control for me, but with Tripwire Enterprise, and one of the things Jeff talked about quite a bit was being able to have a known secure configuration. Sometimes that can be really hard to even define because it could be customized, could be based off of benchmarks, industry standards, and things like that. For me, you know, with Tripwire Enterprise, because we are both a excellent change detection system as well as a compliance system, compliance is not just compliance against the regulation. Compliance is doing something that you're supposed to be doing as told. That could be a CIS benchmark for a hardened, secure benchmark or framework that you use in your organization. Trip or Enterprise, not only can you compare to those benchmarks, you can create your own customized ones, compare to those. That helps you with the implementation part, getting to that secured state, then utilizing its change detection engine 
keep you within that state, both real-time, uh, schedule-based, agent, agent list, basically anything that you Okay, so that was, um, there's a couple of questions up there we'd like to wrap up. Um, if I don't get to a few of these, I'll let you know, I'll let Kate go here in a second, but there's one, uh, a question was, what change management systems does Tripwire integrate with? Uh, that's a great question. So we actually have a integration framework, API driven, that we can integrate with almost any out there. It's about data mapping fields and understanding some of the te technical pieces behind it. But basically, we have some really good prefabbed ones for like Remedy and ServiceNow, more of your typical change management uh, process you'll see out there quite a bit. But the ability to integrate really comes down to how much value is in your change management program or the tool that you have to do that and map the changes happening with Tripwire Enterprise that we're finding with those in order to reconcile. Okay, Kate, there's a couple other questions out there, but we're running a bit short on time. I will make sure I get those answered for you folks that have answered, or asked them, uh, but back to you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and I want to thank both the Jeffs, um, our presenters today, Jeff Hancock and Jeff Lawson. Um, and thank you to our audience. Uh, for attending. We know that your time is valuable and um, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand version of the webcast as well as the slide deck. And if you'd like to receive proof of attendance for, your, um, for being here at this webcast today, please respond to that follow-up email. We hope that you will join us for future webcasts. You can check our schedule at tripwire.com and also check out our award-winning blog, The State of Security, to find the latest in security news as well as thought-provoking security topics. Thank you and have a great day.